Today we are in the Heathcote region where we're meeting the family behind Minari Wines. I'm so looking forward to hearing about this rosé and everything else that happens here, so let's get started. So we're in Heathcote. Tell us about this incredible region. Yeah, um, I it's a it's a really exciting place to be yeah. at this moment. Uh, we're just an hour and a half north of Melbourne, so really close, really. Such yeah. an easy day trip, and that's something people don't don't quite realise. Yeah, I think you can just get in the car, and within t two hours you can explore the whole region. Yeah, really. yeah. Heathcote has a lot more cafes and restaurants and really yeah. things to see and do now. Yeah. Uh, when I was growing up here, that wasn't the case. <laughs> and I might have mentioned to you earlier that I wouldn't have expected to see myself back here so soon. Yeah. Um, but I'm really excited to be here um, and any day of the week I can, you know, go out, maybe see some music or have a coffee yeah. or explore a winery. Yeah. And there's quite a community of wineries here, isn't there? Like there's lots and lots to see and taste and, you know, you're part of this fantastic little group of small growers and winemakers here. Yeah, I think um, throughout the region you'll get a really personal experience. Yeah. It sounds a bit cliche, but it's true. That's really true. It's true. Yeah. And we're still a lot of small businesses working together to try and build the region and yeah. um, increase people's visitation to Heathcote. Yeah, good. yeah, and they're understanding that you're here and you're open and you're exactly. yeah, really excited for people to visit. When someone visits you in Heathcote for the first time, what can they expect when they arrive here? Well, we've been we've been lucky enough to having this property, which even though at the moment the drought has made it not, not look fantastic, <laughs> it has got a nice entrance. The yes. house is pretty traditional, which was thanks to Graham fixing it up before mm -hmm. we bought the place. We're lucky enough to have these old buildings that nobody thought to tear down, thank heavens. <laughs> uh, so where we are at the moment is that this is the old stables. Uh, we did build on a little bit here with, um, with the timber that we took out of the shearing shed. So Great. it's recycled and of course this is facing west and so it's insulated too yes. with that as well. So people have got, they've got, um, I give them as much time as they want yeah. and I'm able to do that because we live here. Yeah, such a great thing for someone visiting the region to have the time with the family and to have their time with the wines and learn from someone like you about what you do and how you do it and it must be really nice to just have that relaxing interaction with people rather than the rush and the bustle. Yeah, do and you I, find I, that? I bring yeah. up politics, I, I just say anything <laughs> I want actually. And, and people quite like that because well, it's genuine. unexpected. Because sometimes, I mean, I'd be exactly the same. I can't, couldn't, wouldn't have been able to carry on an, a half an hour conversation picking apart all the different wines and stuff. So. <laughs> Just, you know, you can taste the wine, you can be talking about something else, what they do in Melbourne, or not yeah. that I would pry, but, <laughs> but this, that they can um, be thinking about how they feel about the wine, yes. and they're talking about other things at the same time. Yeah. And I always emphasise if they're, um, that it's up to them if they like it. Yeah. You know, it's all personal taste. Yeah. So that idea of discovery, though, is really central to this establishment isn't it because you're part of the Heathcote region which has got lots of producers and here you are down this beautiful little lane and this old historical building and you know you're all here. As we've said before some like to go to a very big a big winery where they can blend in yes but others feel when they come some come to somewhere like us or lots of other small producers mm. that they've actually made a discovery yeah, uh, yeah. And they feel, and then they, they tell their friends and, yeah. and stuff, and it's sort yeah. of like, well, we worked this out and we enjoyed the wine. Yeah. And that's, that's that. Adrian, we're here in your beautiful barrel room. Tell us how this all started. Deborah and I were school teachers for, well, I was close to 30 years. Yeah. So we just thought we'd look for a change and I was always a country boy, born over in Seymour. Yeah, right. So uh, it was time to, to move on. So we um, we looked for probably near on two to three years for property. Mm. Uh, missed a couple uh, and then we were very fortunate one day to come across uh, this property. This place. And, um, and uh, we spoke to that, that, that owner, was who's, who was uh, Graham Lewis, and he's been a long time friend. And uh, we're still in touch. 
Um, it's been fantastic, so we took it from there. Yeah. So we basically came in and Gra Graham had already planted about uh, about five, six acres. Okay. On the on the old side, and uh, so he, you know, he he uh, had a vision, and um, unfortunately got a little, uh, got ill, and we we're lucky enough to come along and and, uh, mm. and 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 take over the place. So hopefully, yeah. uh, Graham, if you're listening, we've done it justice. <laughs> I'm sure you've done it justice. Look at this yeah. place. Oh, well, this is just this was going to be a garage, as I said before, but uh, it's come out pretty well, I think. And how did you learn how to make lime? Mm, well, I, I realised, I, I mean, I had a little bit of intelligence at the time and I thought, well, if we're going to grow grapes, I'd better learn a bit about it. Yep. So actually, when I was teaching, uh, I actually went to, uh, to did, enrolled at Charles Sturt and did the Social Department of Applied Science uh, Viticulture. Mm -hmm. It took uh, four years part time, which was uh, difficult for all of us, including Deborah and the Because mm, you would children. have still been working. Yeah, I was still for, working. Yeah, I was still working yeah. in the city and we had um, residentials. Uh, most mm. I was lucky because uh, I was already had a senior position in the school, so I was able to get a bit more time off okay. to, uh, during our school holidays to, to attend uh, the residential schools. Yeah. Might have missed a couple of days, but, uh, but it was they just drink there That's anyway. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I didn't drink. No, it was too hard. But uh, so we did all that, and um, and then really, I suppose um, uh, that, that that was quite exhausting. And then when we finally took over the property in '92, um, it was actually we had two really bad years prior to that, unbeknownst to me. But yeah. uh, 90, uh, 90 and ninety one or ninety one, I think, and ninety two were really heavy rainfall years. So a lot of downy mildew in the region. Ah, uh, sure. And uh, so we came in, and uh, of course there was a massive infection. Uh, so we sort of slightly got on top of it, but yeah, um, cut out for you. Yeah, we did yeah. the first year, and uh, trying yeah. to get ourselves established. Mm. And then uh, we had a bit of a fruit salad, you know, a bit of this, a bit of that, and sort of things, and. And it wasn't my intention. I came in when I was actually it was 40. I was 40 when we uh, it was my birthday when we came in, uh, and we couldn't get in because it was flooded. And all of us and the kids we stayed at the, uh, the local motel for the night because <laughs> you couldn't get couldn't in. get in. No, wow. no. And uh, so it was quite fun, fun for the kids. And then so we got in that weekend and um, surveyed the place, uh, got a few plants in place, and then as I said, we we had such a fruit salad that I, was, I wanted to sell the grapes, but I, I couldn't get a buy it. To, Sure, to take, to take all those lots little of small, different little small parcels. Yeah. And uh, so we decided that um, perhaps we should do it ourselves. So in 1993, uh, this is still the, the shearing shed. Yeah. And over in that far corner, we um, I think I had my first five barrels. But um, so it wasn't my intention to be a winemaker till I was about 50. Okay. I just wanted to grow the grapes, get experience, you know, I still had to teach, I still had to yep. educate the kids and so forth. And um, and because of that, we just found it was, it was just impossible. And uh, luckily, my brother, my brother-in-law, Brian Walsh, the chief wine maker uh, at yes. Lumber, was an uh, incredible mentor. And uh, he sort of, uh, with his advice um, and guidance, we were able to have the confidence to, to do what we did. So yeah. that's how we all started. And uh, 20, what, 26 years later, we're still here, so yeah. we must be doing all right. <laughs> you are second generation so you've come back to your family's business tell us about how you're settling in how's it going yeah it's really good to be back <laughs> I think when I turned 18 and moved to the city I didn't didn't expect to be back maybe not so soon anyway sure but I'm really happy to be back working yeah. with my family yeah building the business yeah bringing back some extra skills that I've learned in the last few years so you've been working in wine otherwise yeah, yeah. Um, I was a wine ambassador for a a big wine company, we had several wine brands and my job yeah, was right. to educate the market, yep. to help people understand wine in a um, more easy to understand way. Yeah. And yeah, build out, build those brands in the market. Yeah. So And now you can apply all of those skills now to I'm the applying home it here, Fantastic. here at home. And so what's we, we've got a couple of wines here. Introduce Minari to me. Wow. Um, <laughs> it's a family business. Yeah. We only have a few employees. Are you, do you have the same I'm the surname? <laughs> I'm the employee. They take their own uh, their own wage, I guess. Um, and we have a little bit of extra help at um, Vintage time. Okay. Yep. But yeah, I work across the business. So during Vintage, I'm in the winery as mm -hmm. the assistant winemaker. You know, during the off season, I'm in the vineyard. Yes. Slashing the lawns, <laughs> helping prune. And then at the other times of the year, I'm, as I said, helping build this brand, mm. doing the marketing. 
going to get into the city at some point and start building our distribution network as well. Yeah, great. So, Deb, tell us about the labels because they're really distinctive, they're really quite beautiful. What's the story? Well, my um, husband's grandparents emigrated post World War One because Northern Italy, which is where they were from, was not a fantastic place to be then. So he came out, um, worked, and then waited, and then brought his wife and three children out. Okay. Adrian's father. The stamps are, are lira stamps, okay. as in Italian lira stamps. Yep. They were set up by its Italy Post, but they only went on overseas mail. And so, okay. of course, as we all know, pre overseas phone calls and things like yeah. that, which were too expensive, which was so expensive. This was the, the letters with these stamps would come to my to Adrian's grandparents. Mm. And Adrian being a young man of you know creativity, he would save them and collect them. And so we yeah. had quite a number of them. And okay. we have since found more in when we've been in Italy. And so where do the images on the stamps come from? They come from the Sistine Chapel. Oh, okay. And so. Um, so it's Michelangelo. So they were from the paintings on the Sistine Chapel mm -hmm. and specific ones were taken out. If they're females, they represent wise women of the Mediterranean. And if they're blokes or males, they are, they are various prophets or wise men who were able to, uh, who were seen by Michelangelo to be important. Yeah, okay. Uh, and so they're actual images from the Sistine Chapel. Yeah, yeah. That's we've, fantastic. We've collected the pictures, so. Wow. We've oh, got, you're got very lucky to have that connection with the history and the, yeah. in the Italian regions and the, that whole letter writing. It's <laughs> just a nice relationship between yeah. his grandparents and his family. Yeah, it's and unique us. and it looks great on the wine label. We've got Rosé here. Yeah. You know, Heath gets really famous for Shiraz and in, in it's a, such a perfect match for the region and the grape variety. How does Rosé fit in? Yeah, I'm really excited about Rosé. I think it's definitely the time for the Rosé revolution, yes. as we say. <laughs> we still get a little bit of resistance um, in trying to sell Rosé to everybody, but I always Good encourage advice. people to try it. Great. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, let's have a look. So our rosé is Sangiovese and Grenache. Great. So a little bit more of a savoury style. Generally the region um, that you're based in would dictate the grape that you choose sure. for your rosé. Yep. So some, you, you might expect it to be Shiraz, mm -hmm. but um, Adrian, my father, the winemaker, he really likes a nice, crisp, savoury style. Yep. And they tend to be a bit better food, food wines too. Yeah, they're a bit crunchy. Aren't yeah, they? exactly right. right. Yeah. So this... Um, although it has a really nice uh, fruit-driven elements yep. to it through the Grenache. So Grenache being a French grape variety that's grown in Heathcote and all over Australia, what does that bring to a blend with rosé? Well, Grenache has quite a thin skin and it has very fruity characteristics. Yep. You also get a really nice light colour from Grenache. Yeah, the colour is yeah. stunning. Yeah, so... Beautiful. You know, you can get a um, more red style uh, mm. rosé, which generally would be Shiraz based. Yes. Um, and then the Sangiovese gives it a little bit more of that savoury element. Yeah. Um, again, it's a lighter grape, so you get yeah. this, a lighter characteristic in your yep. wine. And I think the really nice thing about um. this wine is it's got this nice pithiness, yeah, sort of a, a grape, pink grapefruit, really yeah. refreshing style. So perfect summer wine, but good for dinner too. And really clean as well, and nice and dry, and just really easy yeah, to drink. I that think might be <laughs> that might be one to put in magnums next yeah. year. <laughs> We've said in the past, rosés um, drink responsibly. A good uh, breakfast wine, <laughs> brunch, brunch, brunch. <laughs> fantastic. I also wanted to show you our Ladies Pass Shiraz Great. 2015. We just released it, mm -hmm. and it's really the flagship of the of the property of the estate. Okay. Ladies Pass is the geographical region that yeah. we live in. Yes, I I came through Ladies you Pass. You came through Ladies Pass. Here. You crossed Ladies Creek, and you've arrived here at our cellar door. So, where's what's the story? Well, 
The story of Lady's Pass, it's it's a fork in the road of, um, a few hundred metres north of, of where we are. Mm -hmm. The story goes that back in the day of the bushrangers and the gold rush, yep. the stagecoaches would travel up the road um, heading north and at Ladies Pass it was a really good spot to be held up, to be um, oh, so it's quite to be rub robbed. The story the story is that the, the, the bushrangers were quite polite because they'd bring the men out but they would say, ladies, you may pass. So <laughs> that is such a great little Ladies snippet pass. of history. I yeah. love that. So you've named your flagship wine after this. Talk us through it. It smells amazing. <laughs> it's a it's a good wine. Our wines are all about sort of fruit purity. Okay. Um, we're really really strong in that, and because of the the Heathcote uh, climate's quite moderate, you yep. get nice warm days but cooler nights. You get some really nice fresh fruit aromas in this wine too. Yeah. So the ladies' pass is predominantly these dark fruit, brambly, mm. you know, dark um, dark black plum things yep. like that, and. An element of some of the wines from Minari and also Heathcote is sort of a black olive, herbal, yeah. briny element. Yeah, um, that, I really see that in this. That, yeah. Particularly that brine, olive, olive brine. brine. Yeah. Yeah. Which sounds I, kind of a strange <laughs> thing to say when you're talking about these really bold, plush wines, but at the same time, it just lends that element that brings it all back into check. You yeah. see balance and purity and freshness, and it's not just singular fruit. Exactly it? right. Yeah. It gives it yeah, a really nice um, it's variety complex. of flavour. Yeah, great. Uh, and yeah, we're all about really elegance. We want yeah. our wines to be fruit driven but well balanced. Yeah. Not too high alcohol, not too much oak. Yeah. Quite restrained flavour and really yeah. the, one of the other keys is a nice fresh acidity to finish. And you have this fantastic festival in the long weekend yeah. in June. So tell us about that. So every year um, during the Queen's birthday in June, mm -hmm. we have a community event called Heath Get On Show. Cool. And everyone's encouraged to do something different. You know, there's, um, there's wine dinners, uh, there's workshops, and our sort of little um, extra special touch is a full um, weekend of live music. Great. So we love music, yeah. you know, it's a really great vibe. Yeah. Um, bands awesome. rotating all through. So we're really excited. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully you get a rest between now and the start yeah. of June. Yeah. <laughs> After harvest. We've got, yeah. <laughs> you might get a week in if you're lucky. Probably yeah. a week or so before we amp up again <laughs> for the preparation. But it, it's all, you know, it's the passion, it's right? The, <laughs> absolutely. In terms of comparing the climate of Heathcote to other regions, like where does it fit in terms of, is it cool climate, yeah. is it moderate? Like how do you describe that? It's classed as a Mediterranean climate. And okay. in, in layman's terms, I would say it's like moderate weather. Yep. So we do get hot days in the summer, mm -hmm. but the beautiful thing about this region is um, once the sun sets, you yep. get a really nice cool breeze coming through mm. um, and you have really nice cool nights. So um, yeah. when you don't get wines, you get that, you lock in that fresh acidity yeah. as well. Yeah, and that's what really underpins the Heathcote style, isn't it? It's sort of, it's not these huge wines that we see from really warm climates and it's not, really light on either so it's really exactly. in the middle and, really yeah. elegant styles yeah. and and nice fruit um yeah. purity I think. and cellar worthy as well it yeah seems, you know really we see these really beautiful characters coming at you know three to five years and then they can keep going exactly you get yeah. really well structured wines yeah. um, really nice plush tannin um good acidity and all yeah. these elements lead to yeah. like really cellar worthy wines yeah they're really balanced aren't yeah. they yeah yeah awesome oh well I think you should be proud to be back and to be in Heathcote representing. Yeah, thank so, you. Yeah, I look forward to seeing what happens in the future. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>
it's not often you, often, you don't often see around the wineries is the fact that uh, when people do come in, they're actually dealing with uh, the owners. Who yeah. The owners yeah. and the winemakers. Yeah. And um, and which, which uh, if I'm not, Deborah's generally uh, at the summer door and obviously mm. in here, but sometimes I do come in. So people do get the opportunity to talk to all of us. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and I think that's an important, uh, important thing. And then, uh, contributes to a really good relationship and I hope people understand yeah. that uh, they do get individual service. Yeah, and know, it's really and, uh, genuine as well, it is. isn't it? Because uh, there's, I yeah, can say that, can I? It yeah. is genuine. Yeah, yes, it's absolutely it genuine. <laughs> yeah, we're a family yes, owned yeah. business. Small, exactly. Small so winery. We, uh, we love people coming and uh, enjoy mm. the experience. Yeah, great. So uh, hopefully it continues. So it's at the very top of the list of things to do in Heathcote Wine Region, isn't you it? You must come and see Minari yes. Wines. <laughs> And of course, come and see Panther, who loves oh, the, the he loves seeing, dog, loves greeting course. people. He loves it. So uh, That's don't a very disappoint Panther. Thing, yeah. <laughs>I've had such an amazing day here at Minari Wines. The people behind this business are so genuine and their wines are stunning. I'm so looking forward to drinking this rosé. Cheers.